Today we're gonna to be talking about tips for buying boots online. That's crazy, right? When you're buying boots online, your size is the most important thing. And a lot of you guys don't know what size to really buy sometimes because sizing differs between brands and all of this. So it's kind of tough sometimes, especially when it comes to width because everybody knows what shoe size they are. I'm a 12 shoe size, but often I have to wear 10 and a half boots because they're just too wide. So I'm going to get into the tips first by saying you need to know what your size is before buying boots, like your true size. Not your shoe size, your true size with the width. If you've ever been to a boot store before, you've probably seen one of these. This is called a Brannock device. What you do is you basically stick your foot in it and you're able to get your shoe size, but most importantly, you get your width too on this side over here, okay? The Brannock device, you have a right foot side and a left foot side. So basically you just turn it around depending on which foot you are measuring. Over here is your width and over here is your arch measurement. I wouldn't be too concerned about this right now. All we really need to know is the width and the size, okay? So what you do is you always have to be sitting down, all right? You gotta be sitting down and then you put your foot in here right and here we can see that I'm a size 12 and then you bring this over to the side of your foot and then you're able to match up the the width the size with the width so over here you have the different sizes so you go over to 12 and you can see that I am in the B range see 12 B all right so I am a 12B, all right? But what if you don't have one of these and you're not near a boot store and you don't even want to go to a boot store because you don't want to get COVID? Well, you can measure your foot too. There's ways that you can do it so that you can measure your foot and get an okay estimate, all right? So what you have to do, you also have to be sitting down when you do this, all right? <clears throat> and it's best to do it like in the afternoon when you've been on your feet for a while um, so that they're a little bit wider. You don't get too narrow of a measurement. Now, it's best, it's always best to use this and to get measured by a professional. But if you don't have that option, this is your next best way to figure out what size you are, okay? So sit down, trace your foot all the way around, okay? Boom, 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 boom. And I already did it ahead of time to save time, all right? So you can see that that's the, the outline of my foot with the length and the width measured. So width is the widest part of the foot, okay? So you gotta go from like the ball to just under the pinky toe, right? So when you do this, <clears throat> you then can take a tape measure and measure this, okay? And before the stream, I set up a special page on my website to help everybody with the inches and the measurement. I have uh, outlined everything that you need. So you need to get the length of your foot in inches. We got it all set up here and I am about, about 11 and a quarter, about 11 and a quarter inches. So we come over here to our sh sheet and scroll down and we can find 11, well not, not really 11 and a quarter, but 11 and a third is pretty close. So um, I'm a size 12, right? That makes sense, that's, that's good, all right? And then we take the measurement of the width here and I am just under four inches. So then we can scroll down and over here I have the width chart and you just take your men's size 
to 12, okay? You go down to your size, I'm a 12. Then I go, I go over to just under four, which is like 3.9 inches. Scroll back up on this column and I can see that I'm a 12B, okay? So that is like the kind of the best way to do it by yourself, all right? Uh, it's not foolproof, okay? We are all fools when it comes down to it. <laughs> Us enthusiasts. I'm not, a, I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm an enthusiast and it's just something that I wanna share with you guys so that you have a better idea of what to order. Okay, I think there's more bee widths out there than what the companies would have us realize because it's cheaper to produce D's and double E's mainly rather than expanding actual sizes that fit people. These are like pre-2000 Nakonas when they were still made in the US and back then there were more bee widths than there are now. So what can we do? Let's say you can't find a 12B. Wow, such a big surprise. It's so hard to find 12Bs, it really is. So you're like, well, what size would fit me? Let's say it's 3.9 inches of the width of my foot. Then we can sort of come up here a little bit and see where else is 3.9 in the D range. Uh, let's see, well, that would be nine and a half. So basically, the average nine and a half size, the nine and a half D is the same width as my 12 size foot, which is crazy. So that's definitely not gonna work because nine and a half is way too small for my 12 size foot. So usually I would say if you have a narrow foot, maybe size down two sizes at most depending on the toe shape. If you have a wide square toe or a French toe, you're able to fit in that space a little bit better, a little bit easier than if it was a medium round or a snip toe. Good luck fitting in a snip toe uh, from a 12 to a nine and a half or even from a 12 to, like these were a 10 and a half, right? And I still had a little bit of trouble fitting into these, um, but it's, it's pretty good now that it's broken in. So I usually go to 10 and a half and 11, which is a little bit wider than what I could really go for a lot of brands, but some brands um, shorten that a little bit. They make their D widths just a little bit more narrow so that a lot of us more narrow footed folks can fit in their boots. So there's different ways that you can go about it, but I would say size down about a whole size to a size and a half if you have a narrow foot. Now, let's move on to the next topic. We just talked about sizing and some ways that you can get different fitting boots if you have a narrow width. If you have a, a D width, a true D width foot, you are fine. Like, I'm jealous because you have so many options for boots, okay? When you get your boots online, Okay, they come, you get them in the mail, you're like, whoa, these are awesome boots, sort of like I do on every video. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. Remember, when you get them out of the box, to always try them on, on the carpet, okay? Because if you take them out and you try them on a, a hardwood floor or a tile floor, you're gonna get scuffs on the bottom of the boot, okay? And a lot of these new online only cowboy boot companies will take returns for free, but they can't have any scuffs on the bottom. They have to be in near mint condition. Try them on on a carpeted area. That way you won't scuff up the soles and if they don't fit, you can send them back. Make sure that they do have a good return policy before you order from them. Okay, because you gotta make sure that you can get those exchanges because if you're paying for shipping back and then shipping another boot to you, that can get really expensive really fast. Not only that, you have to wait a bunch of time 
before you can try the boots on again. So it's just a lot of hassle. So they shouldn't charge you for that. Okay, so make sure free exchanges and returns when you order from an online boot company. So you got them on, you put them on in your, cup, in your carpeted area. The next tip that I have is how a boot should actually fit. You got your boot, you're trying it on, you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of nice, I like that. But when you try on your boot, you gotta make sure that it is snug around the widest part of your foot, okay? This is basic how a cowboy boot should fit stuff. Make, it, make sure it's snug right here, the instep, up here should also be snug. This is how the boot stays on your foot. This instep, <laughs> you know, there's no laces on a cowboy boot. You can't lace it down to make sure it stays there. You have to have a snug instep in order for this boot to stay there. So snug around the widest part of the foot, not snug around the toes. You can't have it be snug around the toes, just below the toes and around the ball of the foot. Snug on the instep and you need a little bit of heel slip. When you, when you walk around, your heel should come up about a finger's width, if not two. Now, I know that might feel weird for some people to have their heel slipping in a cowboy boot, and a lot of people will size down because they don't like that feeling. But when you do that, you will get blisters when you wear cowboy boots all day long. I promise you, you will. It is the opposite of what you would expect. You need a little bit of heel slip. Not so much that the boot flies off or anything. That's why this, the instep here needs to be snug. But you need a little bit of heel slip. If you don't have those three things, snug around the widest part of your foot, snug on the instep, and a little bit of heel slip, you should return those boots. And you should thank yourself for thinking about trying them on on the carpet so that you can return them for free and the company still doesn't charge you for them. If you can size with the Brannock device, definitely do it. If you can't, measuring your foot works well too. There's a lot of room for mistakes when you do it like that, which is why this way is better. Um, but if you don't have that option, you can go with the measuring your foot and tracing it out and you know, all that other stuff. Those are my boot buying tips. Remember to get the right width. Then we can buy more online and get more resigned. So stay safe from disasters and viruses. <laughs> How many of you guys are subscribed already? Probably all of you.